Through the Paris Agreement, governments around the world have agreed to decarbonise the global economy over the course of this century. To support this ambitious goal, signatory nations have committed to mobilising at least 100 billion US dollars per year in direct climate finance from 2020. So how are governments going to achieve this? Primarily through the Green Climate Fund. The Green Climate Fund, or the GCF, is a global initiative that was established in 2010 under the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change. It has 194 member countries with its headquarters in South Korea. The GCF will allocate 50% of its $100 billion annual funding to climate mitigation and 50% to climate adaptation. This funding will be focused on supporting programs and projects in developing nations who are facing the disproportionate impacts of climate change. In particular, the GCF will target the world's least developed countries, small island developing states and African states. Projects that the GCF will fund include renewable energy, transportation, energy efficiency, agriculture and water efficiency, forestry and land use, waste management and urban planning. While much of the $100 billion has been marked for public entities, a proportion will also be made available to businesses via the private sector facility. The private sector facility plans on scaling up the GCF's $100 billion funding floor by leveraging finance from local, regional and international commercial banks and institutional investors, such as insurance companies and pension funds. That all sounds pretty great, right? But by now you might be asking, how does an organisation access funding from the Green Climate Fund? The GCF will award most of its funds to so-called accredited entities. Accredited entities can be private or public, non-governmental, sub-national, national, regional or even international. To become an accredited entity, an organisation must go through a rigorous assessment process and meet the stringent requirements of the GCF which include fiduciary standards, environmental and social safeguards, and gender policy. Accredited entities can then apply for GCF funding for a specific project or program. The GCF's approach to funding is quite flexible, in that it can provide a wide range of financial instruments, such as grants, loans, equity and guarantees, to best suit the prospective project. Despite all the promises the GCF brings, a number of concerns remain. For example, there are questions of how and if the GCF will raise $100 billion in a relatively short time frame, that is, within the next few years. And will the GCF unintentionally replace funding that is already being received by developing nations? This last point is especially important, as one of the main principles of the fund is to create additional climate funding for developing countries. Concerns aside, the GCF is one of the largest direct climate finance providers in the world. Other smaller finance providers include the Global Environment Facility, the Asian Development Bank, the African Development Bank and of course the World Bank. As the GCF grows in size, it will play an increasingly important role in decarbonising the world's economy.